He was born by a river about to boil over. In the heat of water cannon and German Shepherd, C.L. Bryant was a child of the 60s in the Deep South, torn apart by racial strife. It shaped his early life, left him angry. Convinced that he and his people were victims, most of their problems created by someone else. He was also a natural leader, rose to president of one of the largest NAACP chapters in the country outside of Dallas. But time and maturity changed him. I have spent most of my life as a Democrat. I recently have seen fit to follow another course. In the 1980s, a new president, a new way of thinking began an evolution of thought. CL liked this idea of free people, free to choose their course in life. And it is the love of our Creator who allows each and every one of us to pursue our individual happiness without government interference. It is that love. Gradually, the scales were removed and C.L. Bryant became not a victim, but a victor. With a burning desire to lead his people to a new promised land. Have the sons and daughters of former slaves traded one form of slavery for yet another? In 2012, he releases the revolutionary runaway slave movie an appeal to his people to run away from a dependency on government and run to the bounty that the greatest country on earth provides to those willing to run. C.L. Bryant had seen the light and joined the fight. We need to understand that government is not God. Hi, I'm C.L. Bryant, and we're here to introduce to America a new radio show that will deal with issues that formerly were thought untouchable. M much of the internal degeneration in the black community uh, really um, took off in the 60s. How about that person that does not have a high school diploma? They can't compete. How about that person who is saddled with a child and does not have any way of taking care of that child? They cannot compete. Our show will be called America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant. As all of you know, America is headed toward debt that is almost insurmountable because there are far too many people riding the great American gravy train instead of fueling the engine that makes it go. Our nation, I believe, is the greatest success story that the world has ever known. But yet we stand in the peril of losing this great nation of ours. I would like for you to join me, lend your voice to this conversation. Along with me will be my friend, Stephen Parr, who has extensive media experience. And together we will explore topics that so many times have been overlooked and hardly touched in the American media. Not During the Great Society, uh, in fact, there was a news headline that said God is dead and he has been replaced with, I think it's 50,000 social workers. We'll be on daily and we will be discussing issues that will be pertinent to your family, to our country, and to our children. What difference at this point does it make? After revelations, it specifically went after conservative Tea Party groups. Targeting AP reporters and editors' work and personal phone numbers. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that, you didn't build that. You know, our president about a year ago said that the 80s was calling and they wanted the Cold War back. Well, I'm saying to you that I hear Ronald Reagan calling and he wants his country back. They didn't give us this country bought with blood so that we could be divided. They gave it so that we could be free. So when you listen to our show, we'll learn together that instead of living on the edge, you'll have the edge. We can't do this show alone. We need your help. We need you to help us preserve the great idea which is America, to help us defend our life, our liberty, and our pursuits of happiness, to preserve this nation not only for ourselves,
but for our children and future generations. God bless you. God keep you. God bless America. Are there any patriots in this place? Is there anybody here who will stand up for God and country? Stand up for the Republic. Stand up for America. That Americans, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. God bless you. God bless America. of big government is the new plantation. And if we are not careful, we will fall under the spell of government handout. My grandpa, he said to me, I didn't go through all that I went through so that you could be black. Everything that I went through so that you could be free. From the bios of Louisiana to the deserts of Death Valley, from the Black Hills to the Smoky Mountains, from the glass and steel towers of Manhattan to the marble halls of D.C., we are a nation seeking solutions, a republic in need of restoration. This is America on the Edge. Okay, we're back. This is C.L. Brian, America on the Edge. And last night, Brian Williams brought up something that has become religion in this country. And it is, in my opinion, the arrogance of climate change that we're talking about here today. And I have with me a meteorologist who will help us distinguish between fact and fiction. News, in many cases, is becoming very fictional. And last night, Brian Williams went a long way to try and scare so many of us Americans. And right now, I want to bring in my partner, and you hear him with me daily, Stephen Parr, who is, in fact, a meteorologist, a scientist himself. To set some things straight, we have some news clips that I want Stephen to comment on. Stephen, take it away. Yeah, we started off last night, Brian Williams. Yesterday what happened was the inter, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change issued its fifth report. And so it made big news everywhere. And Brian Williams made it the top story for NBC News, a company owned by GE, by the way. Let's take a look. At, I want to I want to listen to some of these clips because he made factual errors time and time again before they even got to the reporter. And I want to show those to you at home. Take a look. Good evening. The world has never been spoken to quite this way. We've never been warned like this before, all of us, about climate change. That's just not true. We have been warned before. Let's start with 2006. How about the Inconvenient Truth movie, Al Gore's movie, Inconvenient Truth? We were warned about climate change. That's what that movie was all about. It, they said in that movie, by 2013, the polar ice caps would be gone. Remember, that was a warning about climate change, remember? That was amazing. So seven years ago, eight years ago, Al Gore told us that the polar caps were going to be gone, and the polar bears, too, huh? They're, they're right. still, are they still kicking around? They're still around? Right. The polar bears are going to be gone. Coca-Cola is going to have to get a new mascot. It, it was going to be mass chaos. Here's the thing. Not only have the ice caps not disappeared, they're starting to expand, and polar bear population numbers have increased according to a website and their are their websites for everything but polarbearscience.com says that since 2001 the population of polar bears has increased somewhere between 10 and 20 percent so little children can sleep real easy tonight because if the polar bear decides that he or wants to fight extinction believe me he's gonna migrate south and he may just eat a few of us on the way. Stephen, what else you got for us? Well, I want to talk, I'm going to come back to the point you just made about the polar bears migrating because it comes back to what actually is climate science. After we're done with this Brian Williams stuff, I'm going to talk about what is and what is not climate, and it deals with what you just mentioned. Let's roll the next clip. Here is the takeaway. Unless the world changes course quickly and dram dramatically, the fundamental systems that support human civilization are at risk. That is not true. 
We grow more food. Humans grow more food today than at any time in the history of the planet. Let me ask you this, Stephen. All seriousness, why do they lie to us? There has to be a reason why they are lying. I have a hard time answering that because it's it's difficult for me to put myself in their position to fully understand it. I was raised by a West Point graduate. In my household, we live by the code of ethics that every cadet has to swear to, which is a cadet does not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. So I wasn't even allowed to have friends who would lie. Wow. Okay? So I don't understand why the people involved in this debate put out mistruths. Now, in Brian Williams' case, I don't know if it's an intentional mistruth, a lie, or if it's he's misinformed and simply reading the prompter, or if he's just really, really bad at science. It appears to me that Al Gore may not really believe what he's talking about as some others that we know uh, are true believers in this type of thing. And see, I, I think Al Gore is intentionally misdirecting people on this issue. And, and the reason is, if you want to know what a man truly believes— Watch what he does. There's an actor, Ed Begley Jr. He believes in climate change. And I believe he believes it in the core of his being. He grows his own food. He's got a a windmill on top of his house and solar panels. He rides a bicycle to power his TV. This guy believes in climate change. Oh, yeah, he's a true believer. You know, I fly a lot commercially. Uh, But I think Al Gore, he flies privately. And, And you know what? Back when he was VP, mm-hmm. $1.7 million, I understand he was worth then. But now I think he's worth something like a half billion. Is that what it is? According to CelebrityNetwork.com, Al Gore is now worth $300 million. And most of that money has been made off of investments for climate change companies, for uh, for carbon dioxide recycling centers, for selling his news station to an oil company. Boy, I tell you, that climate change has been quite a hustle for Al Gore. What else do you have for us, Stephen? All right, let's go on to the next clip here, because there, there are three things in this next clip. In one sentence, three things absolutely wrong. And the evidence is convincing enough, in part because so many Stop nations... right there. Stop right there. Convincing enough? No. No, that's not science. You, you're, either, you're either telling something that is the truth, it is the truth, or you don't know, or it's not the truth. Convincing enough? What now, is I've under, that? understood that, that science is observation. Uh, is that right? That's right. It's observation and experimentation. So observation, so would you say that the observation and the experimentation over this last seven-year period has led us conclusively to what they're trying to sell us religiously? Absolutely not. Well, I want to make a point. It's fact, and it's going to blow your mind. There has been no warming, global warming at all this century. Wait, wait a minute. I want you folks to hear this at home again from the meteorologist, the scientist, Mal. Say it again, Stephen. There has been no global warming at all this century. And the third time's a charm. Folks, there has been no global warming at all, at all, at all. So, Stephen... What else do you have for us? There was warming from 1979 up to the late 1990s, but for the 2000s, temperatures have been flat. Let's go on to the next sentence because it doesn't take but a couple of words for him to get off again. Have agreed with these findings that it will hit home across this country. Stop. Especially- okay, stop right there. He said nations have agreed with these findings. That's what the clip said. Nations have agreed with these findings. Nations aren't doing science. Science isn't a popularity contest. It's not. A, a, it's true or it's not. What people believe doesn't matter. Doesn't make it true or not true. So there is no, for for the sake of a, a, a better word, cartel of nations out there who have gotten together and agree that Al Gore and his cronies are right. Is that what you're saying? They may agree. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a logical fallacy. It's called the fallacy of the masses. Just because a lot of people believe something doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it not true. A logical fallacy. So this makes no sense. Whether the nations agree about it or not doesn't make climate change true or not. 
And folks, that is exactly what we are trying to drive home here today. Call us flat earthers if you want to, but you can, in fact, have your own opinion, but you can't create your own facts. That's right. Here's the rest of that clip that it will hit home across this country, especially in those population areas where people may need to be on the move faster than they first thought. What is that about? Here's the thing. with Even if climate change were going on, the, the, it's not something that we'd be able to stop. We can't prevent it. We should be prepared to adapt to it. They're going to use statistics and say that uh, hurricanes are causing more damage. The cost of the damage is increasing. But it's not that the hurricanes are worse. It's not that there are more of them. It's that the cost of the property we own along those vulnerable coasts is more expensive than ever before. When we build on coastlines, you got to expect what happens when weather goes bad on a coastline. Folks, this, I pray, will give you an idea of what our show is about, America on the Edge. We will deal with issues that, in fact, should be talked about, but unfortunately, the liberal media, like Brian Williams, they don't want you to hear this. Al Gore certainly doesn't, and I got to tell you, Stephen, there is, in fact, a religion that is being built around this, and it's one that they really want our children in our schools to embrace. Why would that be? If you can control what's in the schools, you can control the future. Here's one last point I want to make, and it's about climate change. Climate isn't about temperature. Climate isn't about rainfall. When you actually are trying to classify different climate systems across the globe, there's a standard. It's called the Koppen Climate Classification System. It's not based on temperature, not based on rainfall. It's based on plants and animals. When you were talking about the polar bears moving, that's how we classify where an Arctic area is because they don't have trees, but they do have polar bears. That's an Arctic region. The desert doesn't have trees. It does have cactus, does have rattlesnakes. When the cactus starts moving north, that's climate change. When we talk about, uh, and we, we, we'll take calls on this uh, when we come back, uh, but when we talk about the greenhouse effect, does animal, and I'm going to use this word, flatulence, flatulence come into play uh, with that? I mean, they've been doing that for uh, since the, the, the world began, but, uh, I mean, they actually put out more greenhouse effect than, than, than we could. Isn't that right? And they put out more than, methane's a better, carbon, a better greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. But water is a better greenhouse gas than both of them, and water self-regulates through the rain cycle. Amazing. Wow. It goes back to the fact that all of this may have just been created. At least I believe it had been, and I think it's been created to regulate itself. Call me a flat earther if you want to. We're going to be taking your calls when we come back, and I, you're listening to America on the Edge, a place where you don't have to live on the edge. You can have the edge. This is C.L. Bryant. 